الله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين أبو القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم ولعن أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته Last night we spoke about Amir al-Mu'mineen salam Allah alayhi in very brief <clears throat> and we divided his lifetime into five phases and the most critical part of his life was him after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi until his martyrdom so these years that he spent with the companions or so-called companions so that was a very sensitive part. Now, we answered the question of why Amir al-Mu'mineen salam Allah alayhi did not fight for his right if we acclaim he is the divine appointed leader by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we're not going to go through that again. Most people, when they look at the followers of Amir al-Mu'mineen, when they look at the Shia, they automatically assume that our love for Amir al-Mu'mineen or our fellowship for Amir al-Mu'mineen is because we have a gain to gain. Either Amir al-Mu'mineen is my cousin or he's my father or he's related to me, that's why we're following him, or we're getting something out of it, like on a personal level. That's how they make it sound. As we love him, we follow him, and we reject the rest because there is something that we're getting out of this. The idea of why we fell on Amir al-Mu'mineen is we basing it on the fact of why would anyone follow another person? For Amir al-Mu'mineen, for example, if you compare him to the rest of the Sahaba, to the rest of the companions, if we can say they're all companions, that's good and well, all right? If we just leave it at a general concept. But then even among the Sahaba themselves, there are good ones, there are bad ones. There is no logic that says everyone who saw the prophet or who was a friend of his is a good person. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks in the Quran about the munafiqeen, the hypocrites. And when there's a whole chapter in the Quran called al-munafiqoon. And those munafiqoon, they were among the companions. Some of them known to be hypocrites and some of them, some of them are hidden and concealed. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَوْ نَشَاء If we will, we would have shown you those hypocrites, those companions, but we don't. So for a person to come and generalize and says the companions are all, all good, that's nonsense. So when me and you, we need to look for someone better, and when we need to follow somebody, obviously we follow them based on their traits. What makes them special? So when we follow Amir al-Mu'mineen, we say, what makes Amir al-Mu'mineen special? What makes him different from the rest of the companions? What makes him special from the rest of the people around the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Based on what are we following him? Based on what are we choosing him? So it's not a matter of me just loving him because I love him, or because I'm related to him in a way or another or because I have a benefit to get out of his love, out of his fellowship. No. The idea is that you look at the companions, you look at the traits, and then you choose the best amongst them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he chooses his prophet, or when he chooses his successors, obviously when he chooses them amongst the men, he chooses them based on their traits, based on their character, based on their deeds, based on their a'mal. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses them. And then he orders people to follow that person. So when we look at Amir al-Mu'mineen, salam Allah alayhi, and when we look at his traits, obviously he stands out from all the companions. So it would be even logical to follow someone who is better in everything. For example, when the companions, all of them, be the first, the second, and the third, or the rest of them, they all admit to the fact that Ali alayhi salam is the most knowledgeable out of them. So if they admit that there is someone more knowledgeable, then why are they sitting in a position that's not 
theirs, or at least they are not professionals in, because the position they took wasn't a kingship. It wasn't a leadership in the sense of government. It was the leadership of the Islamic nation, the leadership of the Islam itself, the leadership of the Quran, the leadership of religion. Now, if I'm not an expert in religion, and I know someone is, but yet I put myself in that position and reject the other person, that makes no sense. So when all of them admit to the fact that Ali السلام, is the most knowledgeable, yet they don't act upon it. They all admit he was the closest to the Prophet, yet they don't add work on it. They all admit he was the most beloved to Allah and to the Prophet then they still don't act upon it. Even when they admit that he is the most, let's say he is uh, the most uh, pious person amongst them, they still don't follow it. When they admit that he is the bravest out of them all, they still don't admit. So what's the point? When you tell me that this person that has all the traits, they're better than everyone else, and all the companions, all historians, all hadith uh, na narrators and hadith writers, they all admit that there is no one, there is no one who has more fada'il, more traits than Amir al mumin out of all the companions, yet he's not being chosen, yet he's not being followed. It makes absolutely no sense. So when we follow Amir al mumin obviously we follow him based on the fact that this person, he has preceded everyone else. This person, he is the best in everything. He is second to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And obviously if I have to choose, a matter of choosing, I have to choose him. So when we look at even the companions or, or those who call themselves companions, even when they came to choose a Khalifa, they chose it based on what? Do they choose the Khalifa based on his knowledge? Based on his piety? Based on his taqwa? Of course they didn't. And the first, and in, in the matter of the first Khalifa, it was, you know, they went to Saqif at Bani Sa'ada, they went, they conquered the plan, and took them three days, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in his deathbed, he was dead for three days, and those companions, so-called companions, they were fighting who's, who's to become a Khalifa, and Amir al muminin was taking care of the burial. And according to Aisha and Bukhari, she said, we only heard that the, the noises and the sounds of the shovels, then we understood that the Prophet is being buried. So it took them three days trying to fight over who to become a Khalifa, and the Prophet is still not buried yet. And when they chose, they didn't choose based on the lineage of the Prophet, for example, or the knowledge uh, that, the, that amongst them that has, or the piety that any of them had. No. Was it chosen based, chosen based on what they thought they, you know, I like this person, so he should be. And even when the first one passed away, he made the second based on what? Huch. He had no, absolutely no reason. And the third was chosen because the second said, well, I'm going to appoint four of you, you got to choose one, of, one amongst yourselves. Nonsense. If we need to choose, it has to be based on knowledge. So when we choose Amir al-Mu'minin, we say the question, what makes Amir al-Mu'minin different? I'm going to go through ayat of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of Amir al-Mu'min in high regard, which tells me and you why we should follow Amir al-Mu'min and no one else. As you all know, Amir al-Mu'min, when his mother gave birth to him, when she felt her pregnancy is very close and she's about to give birth, she went to the Kaaba, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the wall of the Kaaba broke open and she got inside the Kaaba and the wall went back. That's the historical event everyone submits to. He was the only one to be born inside the Kaaba. Three days later, she comes out from the same wall that she entered. And when he came out, the first person was to greet him and take him was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was 30, Amir Munin was day one. And from that day, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made Amir al muminin his personal case. So from from being a child, he was with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until he grew old. And once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent as a messenger at the age of 40, Amir al muminin was only 10. And he was the first to become a believer in Islam. 
And before that, in these 10 years of his life, he never worshipped an idol. He used to go with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Ghar Fara, and he used to worship with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He never committed a single sin. Unlike the rest, before they were Muslims, they were all sinners. They were all mushrikeen. They all were worshipping idols. According to Umar, he used to make an idol out of dates, and when he gets hungry, he eats that idol of his, that god of his. They used to drink alcohol. They used to do fornication. They used to do adultery. Their history is, is messed up. Even we say Islam cleanses your history, well, fair enough. But you don't compare that to someone who had absolutely clean history, that he was a worshiper from day one. So when we look at him from that aspect, he was, the, he was, the, he was under the care of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from day one. And when Abu Talib was going through hardship himself, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he went to Abu Talib and he said, I want to adopt Ali alayhi salam so to make your life a bit easier. And from that moment, Ali alayhi salam Allah became adopted by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa where he was taking care of him. And from there, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa started, started raising Amir al-Mu'mineen based on the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants him to be raised in this manner. So whatever the Prophet had, he gave it to Amir al-Mu'mineen until he said, I am the gate of, uh, I am the city of knowledge and Ali is the gate. And as a hadith, all the Muslims submit to. No one um, disagree with it. So from day one, he was under the, under the care of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa which made him extra special. Until we look at the Quran. Now let me look at some ayat in the Quran so we could have a, a, an idea why we follow Amir al-Munin. And when we look at the traits of Amir al-Munin, we understand why. In, in an event where we refer to as Mubahala, where the Christians of Najran, they came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and they said, look, they started debating him about God and Jesus and this and that. The Prophet said, well, he started debating them, but then the, the debate, the discussion came to an end. And they said, look, let's do Mubahala. And Mubahala is a, is a system where you provoke the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on whoever is a liar. So they agreed to such a concept. They said, okay, tomorrow we'll meet at this point. You bring your family, we bring our families, and then we, we pray for the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on those who are wrong, on those who are sinful, on those who are at least on the wrong side. The Prophet agreed. The second day the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came by himself, he brought his family. Who were his family? Ali Alayhi Salam, Fatima Al Hassan Al Hussein. That's it. When the Christian of Najran, they saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bringing these people, they understood that no man would bring the wrath of God upon his own family. Then they backed off. And they understood that they were wrong. And they backed off. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this regard, He revealed the version of the Qur'an that is recited and will be recited until the Day of Judgment. Allah says, فَمَنْ حَاجِكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدَ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ Those who debate with you after they understood that you had knowledge, فَقُلْ تَعَالُوا Say, come, نَدْعُوا أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ We invite our sons and your sons. And who are the sons of the Prophet? Al Hassan wal Hussein. وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ Our woman and your woman. Who was the woman of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Fatima al-Zahra. وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ Ourselves and yourselves. Who was he referring to? Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. He referred to him as himself. So whatever value we give to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we give to Amir al-Mu'mineen. Why? Because he says he is nafsi. He is my soul. He is me. Yes, Amir al mumin is not a prophet. He doesn't get revelation. But uh, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he puts him in the same position, in the same status as him. Because he says, if he's my student and everything that I know I gave to him, then he is a mini-me, in a way if we can say. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to Amir al mumin as the nafs of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as the soul of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And this trait... No one had. That's what makes Amir al-Mu'mineen special. 
So when you compare a stranger to someone who the Prophet says, my soul, obviously there's a massive difference. Again, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse, إِنَّمَا يُرِدُ اللَّهِ يُرْتِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّسَّ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَحِرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا Allah, He wants, He wills to purify you the household. And the household, Ahl al-Bayt in this verse, all the Mufassirin, all the ulama agrees it was Fatima, Hassan, Hussein, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Amir al-Mu'mini. The people of the Kisa, and the story of the Kisa, where people, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he puts them under the clock, and he covered them and said, they are my household. And for six months, the Prophet stands at the gate, or at the door of Fatima alayhi salam, and he says, Assalamu alaykum ya Ahl al-Bayt. And he wakes them up for Salat al-Fajr. Six months, he was calling them Ahlul Bayt. He's trying to get the Muslims to understand something, that the, those are my household. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has included Amir al-Mu'mineen in this form of purification from sins in outwards and inwards, because it says rich. Rich includes any form of, um, of sin, whether it's an inner sin and outer sin. So Amir al-Mu'mineen, salamu Allah alayhi, is included in this verse. And no other companion is included. So when we look at the traits of Amir Muni, we say, why? Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran when he says, Inna Allah wa malaiktahu salluna ala nabi, ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allah says, O oh, you who believe, Allah and his angels, they send their salah, their blessings upon the Prophet. So you do the same. When the people came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they said to him, Ya Rasulullah, how do we do salah on you? How do we do it? He says, Qulu Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ali Ibrahim. Wa barak ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ali Ibrahim. Say, O oh Allah, send your mercy on Muhammad and the household of Muhammad. So even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, when he blesses the Prophet, he has also blessed his family, which includes Amir al-Mu'mineen, salamu Allah alayhi. Which other companion has this trait beside Amir al-Mu'mineen, alayhi salam? Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says in the Quran, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي مَنْ يَشْرِي مَنْ يَشْرِي مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَهُ بْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ رَأُوْكُنْ بِالْعِبَانِ This was revealed for Amir al-Mu'mineen. He sold himself for the pleasure of Allah in the event, as we all know, when the Prophet ﷺ was in his house, the mushrikeen, they conquered a plan where they said, we choose a man from each tribe to come to the house and kill the Prophet where he sleeps. This way his blood will be spilled and among the tribes and no one could take revenge for him. So the Prophet came to Amir al mumin he said to him, Ya Ali, would you sleep in my place knowing that you would be killed? Amir al mumin said, would you be saved though? He said, yes. He said, then so be it. And Amir al mumin went and he slept in the, in the bed of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa knowing there are about 70 swords outside are about to go in his body and cut him into pieces. And he went and he slept like a baby. He didn't even care. Maybe this is the only time Amir al mumin even slept like comfortably without having to worry about anything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he looked at this man in this position, he said, He who sells himself to do what? To seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now tell me, who has a trait like that when we compare the companions? Where the first Khalifa, when he was with the Prophet as they were exiting the same event, when they were in the cave and they were the, those who were following them were close to them, he was afraid. This is what the Quran says. Don't be sad. So this guy, he's with the Prophet and he's sad. He's, he thinks he's about to die. And this guy is sleeping knowing he will be killed and he doesn't care. So do you see why we choose Amir al-Mu'mineen? It's not a matter of benefit. It's not a matter of Amir al-Mu'mineen being my cousin. No, it's based on the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at this man highly. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he revealed an entire chapter for Amir al-Mu'mineen, Fatima al-Zahra al-Hassan al-Husayn, in Surah al-Dahr, or al-Insan, Khal'ata al-Insani, Hina min al-Dahri, where you all know the story, three, three an orphan, uh, a poor man, and a prisoner, each night they knock on the door, Amir al-Mu'mineen gives them his food. 
That's all they have. And three, after three days, they were very weak. They were very feeble. The prophet comes to the house. He sees them, he sees them in the state. He says, what's wrong? They said, we haven't eaten for three days. Why? Because every time we're about to break our fast, someone knocks the door, we give them our food. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a ver an, an entire chapter for them. He says, After he said, They feed on the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah revealed an entire chapter and he gave them, he gave them the seal uh, of heaven where no one did in the Quran. It says, The day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a happiness. And so we see that this is among the traits of Amir al Mu'mineen. And also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed another verse for Amir al Mu'mineen in the battle of Al Khandaq or Al Ahzab, where there was a trench between the Muslims and the Kuffar. Amr ibn Abdul Wood, he jumped with his horse. He was a man equal to a thousand. And when he was yelling his voice out and his heart out and his chest out to the Muslim, he said, who wants to go to heaven? Don't you guys believe in heaven? Come, I'll send you to heaven. And no one would even dare to look up. The heads was down. Allah says, فَبَلَغَتِ الْقُلُوبَ الْحَلَالِ their, their hearts reached, their throats out of fear. And the only person that could stand up was Amir al muminin And he was only 19 back then. He wasn't even old enough. He was the youngest among them. And he, every time the Prophet calls, he says, who would go fight him? Amir says, me. He says, sit down. Who would go? Amir says, me. Three times. And I mean, the Prophet said, but this is Amr. He says, Khub, I don't care. I am Ali. He is Amr. I am Ali. Let's go. One on one. He goes and he goes and he kills Amr and he comes back. And in, in that moment, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the sword or the strike of Ali is equal to the worship of both. Uh, the jinn and the ins until the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that regard he sent he he, was, he sent down a verse. He says, وَرَدَّ اللَّهَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِغَيْظِهِمْ لَنْ يَنَارُوا خَيْرًا وَكَفَ اللَّهَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الْقِتَالِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has avoided the mu'mineen, the war, by whom? Ibn Mas'ud he used to say, وَكَفَ اللَّهَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الْقِتَالِ بِعَلِيُّ بْنَ أَبِي طَالِبِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the action of Ali alayhi salam, he says, that's it. No, we don't need any more war. The Muslims were safeguarded because of Ali alayhi salam. So when you look at the Quran, and even, even some of the Sunni scholars, they wrote books about Fada'al Ali alayhi salam, or Khasa'as Ali alayhi salam. Some of them, even Nisa'i, for example, or oh, Nisa'i as they pronounce it, he compiled a book where he said about 500 verses in the Quran was revealed for Ali. And he was not even a Shia. And he was killed for that as well. So we could understand when we say, why do we choose Ali alayhi salam? We choose him because of his traits, because of his actions, because he was the most beloved person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He was the most knowledgeable, the most pious. Therefore, automatically he should be chosen. And that's why Allah chose him. So it's not a matter of us, we choose who we like. No, we leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are more to talk about Amir al-Mu'mineen, salamu Allah alayhi. We'll leave it for other nights. Wa akhir da'wan an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu ala muhammadin wa ali baytihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin.